honored to be uh, bringing up our, our next comedian because we've uh, we've all learned so much from her, and uh, we're we're just uh, we've been. Like we, we, we like her. We like her a lot. We just really love her. And we've gotten her a gold watch. No. <laughs> but uh, she is... <laughs> we have it. She's a writer, and she's a teacher, and she's been doing comedy since the Eisenhower era. <laughs> She wrote that. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know that. <laughs> so, please welcome Christina Hall. Yeah. Hey, um, I want another round of applause for Andrea Ball, who's been working her ass off tonight. And can I get a round of applause for everybody that you saw on stage tonight? Uh, Joseph, and uh, Kalan, and my favorite We saw Josh Medley, the, the car. Could you sense the risk that people were taking tonight? Yeah. Could you be with it? Yeah, yeah I don't know about you guys. You're like, you, were, you were pretty good, but there are parts where you're like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> of where it's going before we laugh and regret it later. <laughs> oh my gosh, happy Halloween, first of all. I don't give a shit about Halloween, but I'm sure you do. Happy Halloween if you get dressed up. Woo! Do you do that? Really? I don't either. This is it right here. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I have uh, I have like two ways of dressing. Either I dress up or I look like shit. I don't know. There's no middle ground <laughs> at all. And I work from home, so I'm you just in my house, nobody sees me, right? So I just wear the same shitty clothes every day, right? So I'm not dating any of you, so it doesn't matter what I say this. And I live, uh, I live in Evergreen, by the way, we never actually... There are people who actually drove down from Evergreen. That's a lot, that's fine, there's like a vortex up there when you're actually there, you don't want to leave. Everything just feels exhausting. I a shut-in in Evergreen. I live like within a mile of Safeway, the dog park, and the coffee shop, and that's all I fucking need in my life right there. <laughs> and then I have this irrational rule of, of presentation, which kind of goes, if, that, if the drive is shorter than changing my clothes, it's not worth it, right? So like, so you're in luck. This was a good hour for me, so I kind of into it, you know? But like when I go to the coffee shop, I'm just wearing whatever I wore yesterday, I roll out of bed, I throw it on. Maybe I got a bra, I put on a bra, and other things over it. <laughs> and then I go to the coffee shop and hope nobody sees me. And they always do. I was actually in the coffee shop, this is true, I was in the coffee shop and I was standing in line behind this guy who was wearing really nice clothes. He had like a linen jacket on. Obviously he was not from Evergreen. He had like a really nice jacket on and like slacks. They weren't even pants, they were slacks. Like a was wearing, there's a whole level up, you know. <laughs> you know the kind of fabric that you just want to touch? Like, it's just, I just wanted to touch it, but that would be weird. <laughs> just touch it. Just touch it. And I thought, you know, I could never date somebody uh, who dressed nicer than me. And then I realized that eliminates just about everybody. <laughs> So I'm kind of changing my dating standards. <laughs> I'm not dressing up for Halloween. I'm not going to a Halloween costume. I refuse. I don't like it. It's too much pressure. I have some painful Halloween memories. <laughs> when I was a kid, my mother would make me Halloween costumes that were only scary to her. <laughs> One year, I was melanoma. <laughs> I was my brother as a homosexual. <laughs> so I told my friends I was a gypsy. <laughs> and I'd like to apologize to my students who have heard that joke over and over. And it's Halloween, I have to do it. 
And it's true in spirit. <laughs> this, is, this is a true story. I was 21, I was waiting tables and um, at this bar. And it was Halloween, so we were all supposed to get dressed up. And uh, they had this cute boy band, like these cute boys in their band were playing that night, right? <laughs> and all the waitresses, we called them waitresses back then. <laughs> and we, we haven't gotten to the server level yet. All the waitresses were like all dressed up, but like in a sexy way, right? So they were like, you know, they were like, you know, a Barbie with a knife in her back, something to imply Halloween, <laughs> right? Like a whore with a noose around her neck, something like that. <laughs> and I dressed as Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> I didn't know the rules around that. It was an awesome costume. I had like brown tights, and then I had like these big, those big brown long leaf bags, you know, that I stuffed, and then like. <laughs> And I had like brown paint on my face and my arms. I had one of those little hats and those little, those little, you know, those little marked marks, the little what's, Groucho glasses. You know, it was awesome. But I learned something so important in my youth, which is that no one wants to fuck Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> dress up anymore. Did you guys ever go to Evergreen at all? Did you get there? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's nice, huh? It's elk season. That means not shooting the elk, but you get to see them now because it's, it's actually rubbing season when they're very aggressive. So all the harems, all the little chicks, hang out with like the big bull guy with like the giant, I don't have to tell you this, you know this, right? You're from Boulder. It's not like too far from your your culture. I don't mean to be super geocentric or anything, right? And you know what I hate? I hate the tourists that come up and they pull over their car on the fucking highway to take a picture of the bull elk, like from six feet away with their phone. I wish he would ram the shit out of them. I have yet to see that, but I want it to happen. I don't mean to be so hostile. I just hate the invasion of nature that that presumes, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. You guys are still stinging over that elk incident you had. <laughs> Cops killed the elk. That was a weird thing. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> we'll just move on. This is not comfortable all the way around. <laughs> I, uh, I might be the oldest one here. I'm 53 years old. Anybody taught me? <laughs> like, uh, really? How old are you? 75. 75? Really? <laughs> Thanks for being alive! <laughs> a lot of things could have happened by now, which is it's true. You know, I, I find it so odd that we are so, like, physically resilient as humans and so emotionally vulnerable. Like, we all get fucked up in our childhood, but somehow we continue living for a really long time. Like, you should have lost a limb by now or something. <laughs> Surely you've had an organ removed or something, but... More than one. More than one? <laughs> Good for you. You're done. <laughs> 70, did you say? 75. 75. That's awesome. There's like a lot. I, I, I can't wait till 75. I want to get... Like between 53, I want to get this part over with, the part where I don't want to be as old as I am. And then, are you are you comfortable with your age? Oh yeah. Uh huh. She looks awesome, I have to say. Yeah, you know what? Shut up. <laughs> Here's my point about that. What she means is you don't look 75 because there's nothing. I mean, I don't mean to pick on you, but it's just something I've been thinking about lately. Is you're not supposed to look as old as you are, and I hate that. Like at what age do you get to be as old as you are? Does anybody know? Like we're always, we're like fighting time. Time marches, up. I have so many friends who are getting work done on their faces and shit. Are you, did you do anything yet? <laughs> no? no? I'm talking to the one behind you. <laughs> I have not gotten any work done, obviously. Part of that is out of principle. Part of that is because I'm totally broke. I don't, and I'm afraid. Like I really don't know where the line is between celebrating and enhancing, you know, what we love about ourselves and feeding our insecurities. And I don't know if I had money, I might be the cat lady right now. I don't know. I might just have them peel my face right off and replace it with another one, maybe an African American woman, something more interesting than this, than a fading Scandinavian lady. But I feel like. 
that forefront. Everybody I know is like, and we're talking some powerful women, like this whole generation of powerful women who know that they can choose not to get married or they can choose not to have children, but they get to a certain age and it's like, oh. <laughs> so it's like, I'm not reproductively viable. <laughs> Which is the biology behind it. You're supposed to look, you know, reproductively viable because that's where, you know, Biologically, that's our value, is it not? <laughs> like one uncomfortable chuckle. I don't know where she's going. It's a comedy show, is it not? What? Look at the flyer again. I'm just reacting because I just feel like, you know, my face is pulling at my jawline. And right now, it's... It's a very uncomfortable sensation. I just want everything to lift up a little bit. I just don't know when we're going to stop. I mean, how young has been young enough? Like, we're just going to want to look like in our 20s? Is that how old we're supposed to be? Or teenagers? Children? Are we just going to keep going backwards as technology advances? We're just keep looking younger and younger? Try to look like babies? You know what I mean? <laughs> you know? Put, like, rubber bands on our wrists to make it look like we have those little wrist wrinkles and babies do. <laughs> Suddenly we can be fat again. <laughs> Those big ugly bows that people put on their girl babies. So we don't confuse their gender. <laughs> I am growing more ear. Here's really what I do is I look at I don't really look at people and say, Am I younger or older than do I, you know than this person? I think, am I angrier or less angry than that person? <laughs> I'm always looking for people who are angrier than me so I can go, well, I'm not that angry. <laughs> I feel a little uh, irritable sometimes about um, uh, how we are as sort of this white privileged culture, middle class culture, which, well, we all are in this room. <laughs> Is that not right? <laughs> Because I, I want, I have this great passion. I want us all to identify our childhood wounds, heal them, and then get the fuck over it. That's what I want. I want us to stop blaming our parents for everything. Are we not done with that yet? You know, like some people have some real shit they have to get over in their childhood, and I totally get that. But for most of us, they are like the petty little complaints about our parents that we carry on forever, right? Like I have a friend who's like, you know, we moved around a lot. <laughs> and I just don't feel like I can get really attached to one place. And I just wish my family, and I'm like, really? That's the problem? <laughs> you had a home? <laughs> you had multiple homes? <laughs> oh, I don't know, my mom just didn't give me really good self-esteem. Really? You know, do you think like back in the medieval ages, people were like scratching out a living on their potato fields, <laughs> you know, <laughs> complaining about their parents? I don't know, my mom, uh, she didn't instill in me a need for success, and I think, I'm like 16 potatoes. Look at Sven, he's got 42. I think it affects my relationships. Sven's over there going, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough. Uh, I do have a bias in that I am a mother. So I, I do need to like say that, cover my ass and say that right up front so I have a different point of view. Um, my son is 18. I just uh, I went to this coffee shop and there was this um, little boy who uh, was four. And I know this because he goes, I'm Aaron, I'm four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> I know, uh, it's really cute. And I go, hi Aaron, I'm Christina, I'm 53. <laughs> and he goes, count. <laughs> Seventeen. Took a long time. He's learning to tie his own shoes by the end of that. <laughs> Nothing brings it home faster than counting out your age. Try it sometime when you're on the toilet next or something alone. Just count out your age. You'll remember every year will come back to you. It's awesome. Another time, this woman, uh, I was, I saw this. I was in the. Co I'm always in the same coffee shop, and I really am. I was there with my son, who's like he's six foot three. And uh, this old Korean lady uh, was there. I guess it doesn't matter that she's Korean, but it makes her cuter somehow in my mind. <laughs> and I was talking to her and she goes, um, oh, you have a beautiful grandson. Oh. I was like, oh, he's 
not my grandson, that's my son. And she goes, ah, God gave you a great late gift. <laughs> you my great late gift. <laughs> Somebody thought I was Mrs. Santa once, I'm not kidding. Somebody thought I was Mrs. Santa. They go, I know who you are. <laughs> you are Mrs. Santa. I mean, they were loaded, obviously, but still. <laughs> I'm not Mrs. Santa, bitch. I am not Mrs. Santa. <laughs> I'm sexier than Mrs. Santa. <laughs> Mrs. Santa doesn't even have any credit. Whoa, who is Mrs. Santa? She's Mrs. Santa. Like, she doesn't have an identity of her own, right? What does she do? She bakes cookies. It's not like she's out there, you know, I'm going back to journalism school because I want to make a difference. <laughs> I'm, you know, I want to be an entrepreneur, you know, make a lot of money, become a philanthropist. No, she's just missing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I am not married. I, I've never been married, uh, which is kind of an anomaly. Anybody like me that's never been married that's, you know, older enough to make that distinction? <laughs> Has everybody here been married? Yeah, don't, don't, don't muster the energy to clap. That would be... That's too much. I have, uh, I have never been married, and I, and I raised my son alone. I was a, a single mom. There was no father involved, um, so I had to be both the mother and the father, which really just makes me one angry mother. That's really... <laughs> And now he's uh, and now he's 18. And, uh, and let me just tell you, first of all, I, I feel like this is important. Everything that I say about my son, I've asked my son if it's okay to say it. Like, here's the thing: that guy, that guy is is such a deeply compassionate and thoughtful person, and he's really funny. I adore him. And so we've had this agreement since he was 10, and I accidentally made a joke about him as a baby. Uh, and the agreement started that I'm not allowed to refer to him from the neck down in any way. Not even his beautiful piano hands, can't mention them, you know? That was like the first rule. And now the rule is that anything I say, any joke I make about him, I have to run past him. So I want you to know in advance that he's good with it. Uh, and so anyway, he's an idiot, is what I was going to say. He's like a genius and an idiot. Like he once explained, when he was young, he explained to me, uh, uh, you know, the theory of relativity e equals mc squared. And I have never been so proud or so bored in my life. <laughs> Not interested. So, I don't know if you've had a teenager, but they go through this brain fog stage. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, yes. girls are different. You have girls though, right? Yes. But do they do that too? She's one here, so we have to be careful. Okay. Well, she's older now, like she's an adult. She's 22. 22, that's one. Adultish, whatever. Adult like. Yeah. Um, Kiki, adulty. <laughs> um, so, but they're different because teenage girls, they just go nah, 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 in their teen years, right? I mean, no offense. I mean, like, why, why would I care? But, you know, nah, 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 nah. and then teenage boys are like, <laughs> 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 my own progeny here, okay? <laughs> His friends come over. Hi, Trevor. <laughs> and he's upstairs. <laughs> and you're home Say hi to your mom. <laughs> There are the simplest household tasks that that kid cannot complete, and I do not understand like like a monkey could do it, a, a fucking monkey could do it, and not just a trained monkey. Any monkey, just pluck them out of a jungle, stick them in the kitchen, like given perhaps, a given in the kitchen. That dishwasher will be empty in three hours and possibly loaded. <laughs> Such a sweet kid. I, um, very, 
very condescending. We've reached that age where we both, I mean, he thinks I'm an idiot too. And I do actually, I have to, sometimes I act like an idiot around him. Cause like sometimes I'll go, hey, hey honey, can you, um, can you fix the printer? I can't get the printer to work. And they'll come in and go, uh, did you plug it in? And I'll go, I don't know, I'm on the couch, did I? <laughs> do it then, do it. Then press the button. <laughs> Sometimes he gets so condescending though, it drives me, I, I'm not kidding, like, like, like uh, recently he sat me down to explain something to me and he goes, let me just, um, let me try to put it in terms that you'll understand. <laughs> frequency to your low base level so we can somehow communicate. So intellectually superior. And I realize developmentally, you know, it's well, it's what kids do. But still, it annoys the shit out of me. Does she, your daughter do that to you? No, never. No. She doesn't know more than you. That's why I get it. Like it is. But it's still dry. I get, I get triggered by it sometimes. Like one time we're in the kitchen and he goes, uh, and there's coffee spilled on the counter, like from the morning. Right? And he goes, he goes, oh, mom, you know, normal people, they have like a towel right here. I know when they spill something, they'll just take the towel and they'll just wipe it up. Like that. That triggered me. I was like, you know what? You know what? You came out of my vagina. Face first, dude. Andrea's kids are so cute. They're very cute. And they're like 12 and 9. So that's like the cute age. They're so, like my son, I remember he was really sweet back then. He'll still like, um, he'll give me like a little side squeeze, you know what I mean? Or like he'll sling his arm around my neck, um, even in public, which I think is, is good. You know, that's enough. I mean, sure, you know, I miss the sex. But it's <laughs> sex with my child. Totally not my type, because I'm more interested in, that'd be like having sex with my brother, again. And I don't ever... <laughs> no, that's the one good thing about my family. We find each other repulsive. That's our foundation. Aren't you wondering what jokes my son said I couldn't do? I haven't been married. I don't know if I could be married now. I'm a little concerned about that. Like, I'm wondering if, like, I always just thought, oh, one day I will. I probably will one day, you know, down the line. And I'm kind of concerned that I don't have the ability to learn something new. Like, I'm getting to a certain age where something is calcified, you know, and, and maybe it's, you know, I, I, I can't fathom actually learning this new skill of, of being married. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like learning French or something. It's like going to France and then having to learn French, which is way too hard because you're going to butcher the language and then people are going to be offended by your bad communication skills. That's kind of how I, how I see marriage. And I also think like I'm such a creature of habit, I'd have to give up things that are, are really important to me. Like um, three-day Netflix binges when I'm depressed. <laughs> like, I don't know if it's... Can you do that when you're married? I don't know if it's as good. You can't really luxuriate in your depression when somebody's vacuuming in the next room. <laughs> you know? Or somebody's in there going, wrap it up, wrap it up. <laughs> wrap up this blue phase. I would totally be supportive of him if you were depressed. I'd give him the remote, you know? <clears throat> Tuck him in bed. Say, let me know if you need something. Had him a jar of peanut butter and a spoon. That's dinner. <laughs> <laughs> what? You haven't been depressed? That's what you eat. <laughs> you know what else is, um, I'm always the messiest person in a relationship. 
Anybody else like that? The messy one? Yeah. Why? And then you're the asshole, right? Is that your guy person? <laughs> yes, your guy person? <laughs> what is it? What's the... Oh, really? How long have you been married? A year? A year good over the hump? I don't know what that means. I'm just trying to be cheerful. <laughs> So you're the messy one? Well, I'm the messy one. Yeah, and you're tidy. You're Mr. Tidy. Does, does she drive you nuts in that way? Sometimes. You're so full of shit. You're just sitting here in the front row trying to be nice. Trying to be cool or nice. Just sometimes, but you're pretty cool with it. Yeah? And what about you? Do you feel guilty about being messy? You do feel guilty about it. Yeah. Why do you feel guilty about it? What? Because you feel like the irresponsible one? Because you're like the alcoholic in the relationship. <laughs> Ask yourself this question, why is it his standards you have to adhere to? Like, who said that the tidy one wins? Like, who, who decided that order is better than chaos? Exactly. You know what I mean? They, he should dumb it down for you. You should, like, come home and go, newspaper, right? Because when I left the house this morning, it was all over the couch. <laughs> I'm trying to work with you here. Walk into the bathroom, you know, look down at the floor. Um, hey honey, where's the towels? Where's the, where's the floor towels? They're not here. Oh, I see them right here on the towel rack. No, I got it. I got just let it go. I've got to include all of him. It's all good. What's your favorite quality about him? He's very kind. He's kind? Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, no, that's really good. That's really good. What's your favorite quality about your... The same thing? You guys are, are like very compatible boring people. But... Thing, right? And really, what else do you need after that? I mean, you know, maybe a couple things, but I mean, that, that's a good, it's like a really good foundation. I can't say, I have no idea. I don't know how it works. I, um, I, went, I started uh, this sort of dating binge um, like a year ago, and I really thought, you know, I'm just going to learn something new from everyone I date, and I'm just going to I'm just gonna date as many people as possible, and then I'm just and then I'm just gonna like see what I learn from it. You know, and I dated 22 different people, 22 different people, right? And here is what I learned: nothing. <laughs> I'm exactly the same person. I don't know. I don't know nothing about nothing. <laughs> At first, I was all excited about the man buffet. You know, I'm just gonna date all different kinds of people, and you know, I am not interested in younger men. I am just, I've never been attracted to younger men. For me, they remind me of my impending death. I don't like that. <laughs> you know, just by virtue of them being attracted to an older woman, you know, I don't understand why that makes me. That makes me the older woman. That's like not the sexy one. That's like, I don't want to be the older one. You know, I want there to be some other reason. Although, you know, I don't know. Like, if a guy is like, you know, I'm really, I'm really attracted to older women, then I could go, well, really? Because I can't remember shit. <laughs> old I am. <laughs> I went out with this guy early on who, um, you know, texted me. He was a younger guy, so I thought, you know what the hell? Okay, he's like 20 years younger than me. So he's texting, as the kids do. <laughs> and, and he texts, Tell me something vulnerable. And I was like, oh, now that's some, okay, now it's interesting. <laughs> so I texted back, um, well, I just went through an existential crisis. And he texts back, this is my phone, by the way, we're just, <laughs> my phone. He texts back, um, what's an existential crisis? <laughs> So I text him this long, long ass text that's like, well, it's when you don't, you wonder, you're, you don't know if your life has meaning or value or purpose, and, and you're really struggling with the fact that we're all alone, that everything must end, right? <laughs> and then you have to <laughs> derive your own meaning as a way to go on. 
And the guy texts back. The guy texts back. This is true. He texts back. I see. Do you like to wear heels? And he texted yes. And he texted, I like soup. And that's when I realized he was very stunned. The most of the men I dated were about my age, which is which is my preference. I'd prefer to share the same stage of life, but a lot of those men have gotten out of really long marriages. You know, like one guy I said, so what are you looking for? And he goes, I just, I just want to meet someone nice who likes sex. Like, you know, I want to raise the bar. You know, like, throw in an accent or something. I don't know. <laughs> it was so exciting. Where's Joseph? Uh, I, I'm sorry to interrupt the show, but what the fuck time is it? You're done. Pardon? You're done. Okay, good. <laughs> We're coming in. Did you flash the light at me? Yes. I did not see it. I'm sorry. I have really bad eyesight. That's why, like, when I go in and get my nails done, I, does he look good? I have no idea. He said, the Vietnamese ladies always look at me and go, you need your eyebrows done. And I, maybe I don't, but they know I can't see, so. <laughs> cannot see, even a flashing light. I, my eyes just absolutely suck. I'm, I apologize. I'm sure you're very attractive people. I think they sense an attractive nature. <laughs> Attractive, generally speaking. So when I first started dating, I got this, um, it was kind of exciting to talk on the phone to guys. It's like being a teenager again, right? I found myself like using my, my, my uh, flirty voice on the phone. I didn't want them to know what I really sounded like, like the way I talked to my son, you know? So I'd be in my house and I'd be like, oh, um, oh yeah. Oh, I love Peruvian food mm, and the people. Hold on just a second. Jiggle the handle! <laughs> Alright, I'm back. <laughs> my, my next door neighbors thought I was a lesbian. <laughs> I actually had a conversation where we were like, where we thought you were a lesbian? We both did. We talked and we were sure. And I said, why did you think I was a lesbian? And they said, well, we never see any guys over at your house. I was like, that doesn't make me homosexual so much as an unsuccessful heterosexual. <laughs> Basically, I'm a straight loser. So I... <laughs> so I, uh, I would get on the phone with these guys and... Um, I, uh, I found that, you know, conversation went to sex pretty quickly, as it does, right? It just doesn't take very long. And, and here's the thing, you know, I would often get this question, I'd often get this question, um, is there anything that you've always wanted to do? <laughs> you've never done before. I'm like, you know, you've been married for 34 years. I'm 53, I've never been married, so, no. <laughs> Actually, I wanted to go, um, <laughs> do you mean sexually? <laughs> okay, I can't believe I'm telling you this. Right, um, so, I've always wanted to have sex with someone I love. 